I mean, how many mornings can we start our time together by pointing out how far from uh, previous standards of normality we have now drifted? Two of the key players in the government's response to the pandemic, and you'll remember it still ranks among the worst in the world, certainly for comparable populations, but I I fully appreciate that the Prime Minister's polling and the Conservatives' polling has somehow managed to rise above that simple, tragic, lethal fact. Two of the key players in this government's response to the coronavirus are now fighting like ferrets in a sack. Uh, claim and counterclaim, accusation and denial, he said, he said. It, I mean, it, it is breathtaking, right? It's another pinch yourself morning. It is actually incredible because, and I don't think this is deliberate for what it's worth. I'm not, I'm not going down the conspiracy route on this. It, it occurred to me as I was sort of trying to work out what to say, and we'll, we'll have a proper look at what's going on in select committee at the moment where Matt Hancock is uh, denying everything that, that Dominic Cummings said in, in select committee a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I kind of started thinking of the coin toss theory. You, you remember? You, you, you toss a coin, you shout heads and tails, and then however it lands, you do a quick lap of honour and start high-fiving your fans. Well, in a way, I think... All right, it's a bit, it's a bit early for this level of self-reference, but I think if you combine the toss, t- coin toss theory with the footballification theory, you end up with a fairly clear vision on what is going to happen next. And, and that is that, in a way, you're now being told to pick a side between Dominic Cummings and Matt Hancock. You're not being told to. That, that's the offer that you have, isn't it, really? Who, who do you believe? They are uh, so utterly at odds, at complete loggerheads, that you find yourself wondering which one you trust. Now, I would go for the evidence, which means 1-0 to Hancock at the moment, because Cummings hasn't produced the evidence that the Select Committee reportedly required him to produce, although I read that many Conservative MPs are, uh, who know Dominic Cummings a lot better than, than we do, they are saying that Matt Hancock will, uh, that Dominic Cummings will wait until he's heard what Matt Hancock says before dropping further bombshells, if indeed there are further bombshells to drop. And this is one of the problems with uh, seeing the two of them as s- something of a rock and a hard place. It, 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 in, a, in a society, and certainly a media society, media-led society, that is utterly tribal now, what happens when your team starts biting chunks out of each other? I genuinely don't know. I do know that this is going to be the flavour of of government for the next couple of years. This ever-decreasing circle as the reality of Brexit begins to bite and the denial. I don't know if you've seen a magnificent piece in The Telegraph today saying that, listen, the European Union, we signed the deal under duress. They must have known we weren't going to stick by it. It's incredible that, right? Six months. Six months it's taken to go from, this is a deal of Churchillian diplomacy, the brinksmanship deployed by Boris Johnson in securing this deal is absolutely... Six months later, yeah, well, listen, we only signed it because we had to, and they must have known we weren't going to abide by the thing what we signed. Six months it's taken to do that. But, hey, uh, there's a statue in Cambridge that you show, or Oxford, or possibly Canterbury, I I don't know. Let's talk about that instead. So you've got this astonishing situation now where... If you've got the Brexit scarf or the Tory scarf or the Boris Johnson scarf tied around your neck, you're now having to pick a, 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 a champion from the key advisor who did more than any other to get Brexit over the line and the sort of key turncoat, uh, probably the most prominent former Remainer in the cabinet. It's him or Liz Truss, isn't it, really? And I don't know what to do. I don't know how that works. I, if you find them almost equally reprehensible, if you wouldn't trust either of them as far as you can spit, but you know that on this occasion one of them must be telling the truth, or possibly they're both telling the truth some of the time, or none of them are telling the truth any of the time. How? how I, this is the complete denigration of democracy. I, and, and amazingly, I got a political prediction right yesterday. I haven't checked the Telegraph, actually. But Gove being found to have acted unlawfully hasn't made any front pages. I think Noel Gallagher's on the front page of The Sun for slagging off Prince Harry. So we can um, fairly conclude that he's got an album out. That, uh, so, yeah, I don't think it made any front pages. But, it, of course, he was found to have acted unlawfully. The, the Daily Mail, which is increasingly uh, nailing its colours, I would suggest to Michael Gove's mast, reports it magnificently. As So do, 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 do Michael Gove was found to have acted unlawfully. 
The Daily Mail reports Cummings' chums were handed a £560,000 contract unlawfully. I know that's only the headline, and if you read a little further into it, Michael Gove's name presumably appears. Actually, shall we find out how far into it you have to go before his name appears? The government acted unlawfully, run by friends of Dominic Cummings, victory for campaigners, Mrs Justice O'Farrell, Cummings, later sacked, taken to Twitter, that's par three, par four... No, part five, fair-minded and informed observer. No, part six. No, part seven. At the hearing, Mr Cummings admitted being long-term friends with the married couple running the agency. Dig a dig. Crikey, I knew him. I used to work with one of these people. Good Lord. Uh, delivering, so pick a part nine. Show, so to Mr Cummings, ten. Have they done the entire art? That's an absolute masterpiece. They've managed to report it in the Daily Mail without mentioning Michael Gove. That's just magnificent. Seriously. Why do they need to pay £560,000 on public relations or um, whatever it is these people do? Research, market research, when they can just phone up the Daily Mail and say, hey, write the story about Gove being found to have acted unlawfully, will you, lads? But do us a favour, don't mention Michael Gove in the article. I, I must have missed it. Can, Keith, can you just have a look at that, mate? I need two pairs of eyes, yeah? I, I, I must have missed it. So that, that's where we are now. It's, 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 I mean, you look, split the country down the middle, 52, 48, call it what you will. It's probably more than that now, looking at, at the 80-seat majority. I, I genuinely don't know. Um, and then split the other, split your half down the middle, half Hancock, half Cummings. I, 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 I mean, what happens next? You split that down. You take the people that came out for Hancock, you split them down the middle when, I don't know, Rishi Sunak comes out and contradicts what Hancock said. And, and you'd think I was exaggerating right up until the point where I tell you that The Telegraph today is reporting that the deal that we signed on Christmas Eve, and which they told you was absolutely, magnificently, unbelievably brilliant, was a pile of doodah that we signed, and I quote, under duress, because the alternative would have been the no deal that many people still in Parliament told you would actually be better than any deal at all. Ah. 11 minutes after 10, we need a phone in. Don't we? we? Need to come up with a question. How do I, what do you do on a day like today, when you've been given a choice between two of the government's most senior members, one elected, one not? Very amazing how people suddenly love unelected bureaucrats like David Frost or Dominic Cummings. When I thought the whole point of Brexit was to stop them having undue influence over. Uh, British politics, but hey ho, that ship has sailed. What do you do? Like, uh, Hancock versus Cummings, especially if you really don't have any form of uh, admiration for either of them. They're both despicable in so many ways. And yes, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, James, you were sticking up for Matt Hancock for quite a long time. And you know, I'm a sucker. I'm a human being. I look at the fella. I see his hangdog expression. I see the photographs of him really trying hard on the football pitch and coming a bit of a cropper. He's got this sort of inner 11-year-old with Matt Hancock that's very near the surface. With Dominic Cummings, it's more like a sort of inner skeletal. With Matt Hancock, it's an, it's an inner 10-year-old. I could imagine him in short trousers and Billy's boots. You know, I, I know this is pathetic, and it's not really what you expect from your Gimlet-eyed correspondent. But I, I just, I don't know. I, I, maybe it's just because of the company he keeps. But there's a... Oh, I don't know. I mean, what a choice. How is it... That's the question. How has it come to this, where today you are being asked? Because there's no third way, is there? Is there? Can you rise above the fray? I don't know that you can, because what happened last year? Why so many of us died? And you, you, you think at this point of my caller, John, and his late daughter, Susie, and his, I mean, heartbreaking contribution to this programme um, not long ago. You think of him, and you think of his family, you think of all the, 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 the tens of thousands. How many died unnecessarily, we will probably never know, but we do know whose fault it was. It was the fault of Boris Johnson. It was the fault of Dominic Cummings. It was the fault of Matt Hancock. It was their fault that we did everything too little too late. It's incredible. And now you've been told to pick a side between Hancock and Cummings.